Hey friends, welcome to the program. Hey, before we get into tonight's episode, I wanted to invite you to join me every Tuesday night for Tuesday Night Live. Now there's a few different ways you can do it. You can come right here to the Midwest Healing Center, 728 North Main Street in Lorain, Missouri, right here at the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks, free and open to the public. Everybody's invited. Now most of you probably can't get here, but that's okay. The other way that you can do it is you can jump over to the Two Guys in a Bible Facebook page every Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Jump over there, the live video stream will start. Man, you want to learn more about faith and healing and really dive into some good teachings outside of the confines of just, you know, television uh, time frame here. Man, Tuesday nights is your thing. Tuesday night live, 6.30 p.m. I would be so excited if you could join me. Thank you for joining me on Christ the Healer. And we've been looking into each individual healing miracle of Jesus. Now listen, uh, I understand if maybe you've missed some of these uh, in the series here, some of the previous episodes, and maybe you feel like you don't want to kind of jump in to the middle of, of a series here. I want to assure you something that uh, all of these miracles hold the power all their own to be able to get you set free. So you don't have to worry if you miss some of them. Uh, and if you did miss these, although you should go check them out, uh, here's the thing, I'm posting all these for you for free on Facebook. If you went over to the Christ the Healer TV show Facebook page, you can find them over there or the Two Guys in the Bible YouTube, you can go over there and check those out. Again, uh, no charge means no excuse. So go check them out. But this particular topic, I believe is something that all of us should continuously be feeding our faith in because we know that all of us are gonna have an opportunity whether it be in us or somebody that we know, we know that there's going to be an opportunity that could possibly arise where a physical condition is going to warrant a miraculous move from God. We have an enemy. And if he can gain a foothold on your health uh, and, and we don't understand uh, that there is divine intervention available to you, then we know that real quick a foothold can become a stronghold. And so if we lack understanding about the miraculous, how to defeat sickness and diseases, listen, the devil is just looking to make your life really of no consequence. He looks to steal your purpose. So maybe he won't kill you necessarily, but he sure looks to hinder you. And then of course, in doing that, he wants to keep you from God's fullness in your life. And nothing does that more, if we're being honest, than physical issues. And so whatever role that takes, the enemy looks to take mothers from children, children from parents, siblings from each other, take our friends out, and of course, affecting your physical well-being. And again, he wants to steal your purpose. In the end, we understand if this goes on too long, what was a good life now suddenly becomes somebody wanting to die simply because they really just don't want to be sick anymore and they can't imagine going on this way when their body has failed them and so uh, they don't know any other options and then we know when the doctors say something like there's no more that we can do people lose hope real quick but I'm here to give you another option tonight that's the point uh, one that is of the miraculous divine intervention where God can step into your life so fast and change your physical body so fast your mind may not even have a moment to be able to process what truly has happened to you. And uh, too good to be true? No, friends, listen, it's just Bible. It's just the Bible, praise God. It's the almighty God at work. So, I mean, we've seen those with stage four cancers, inoperable, incurable, that they were healed, they were delivered in a moment's time. I mean, no treatments, no surgeries. Uh, we've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears opened up. Uh, a woman in New Mexico, we had come in in a wheelchair. She had no hip bones, no hip sockets in her body. Suddenly she stands up out of a wheelchair with hip bones and, and, and hip sockets again. Brain cancers and tumors disappear, lumps gone, cripples walking, and, and again, pain leaving body. Uh, we've had those that have had hardware in their body where uh, holding bones together, suddenly now they get healed and even the hardware disappears, and why not? Listen, why not? Um, you know, we're talking about the power of the Almighty God, not this ministry, not my anointing. The Bible says, uh, talking about Paul, they said, no man can do these miracles lest God be with him. Well, on the other side of that, a man can do these miracles if God be with him. And it's the power of the word of God. You know, it still produces the results as it always has. And um, I don't think it too far of a stretch to believe that the God that created these human bodies could probably also figure out a way how to fix them as well. So I don't think that's too hard. So don't make the mistake in thinking that we're saying it's because of us. Listen, no man is being blamed for these miracles here. It is Jesus Christ, him resurrected from the dead. And so what we set out to do then in revisiting these miracles is to go back and really we want to dig into these uh, because most of the time all you're hearing in these stories is the outcome, right? We know the outcome of the stories, but what about some of the details that led to the outcome? That's what we're looking for because 
Romans 10 and verse 17, still the truth. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And our faith has to be in the word, not in somebody else's testimony. Even as good as that testimony could be, what about the word of God? What about trusting God, taking him at his word, knowing that he heals you? Knowing that God is settled on that word, God's not going to change, and he is faithful, and he's going to do the same to you as he did these in the Bible. He's going to do that to you through Jesus. Now, you're going to have to get it settled in yourselves tonight that Jesus has risen from the dead, and he still has power to heal people, and he's still doing what he's always done. We see it all throughout the Bible. We see it over and over again in his miracles here. And even after he ascended to heaven, the miracles didn't stop there. Men were still working miracles all throughout the Bible. And again, as great as these men were, don't think it was their power. Again, this is God working through men, just like he does today. And nowhere do we find even a half a scripture that would even indicate that miracles had ceased with the death of the last apostle, because that would mean that the power would have had to have been in the apostles and not God. And friends, it wasn't happening because of the power of a few men called apostles. It was happening because of the power of the almighty God. And so it is that way. We see it all through history, even up to this very night, miracles are still happening. And so the expectation for us really should be found in what took place back then as well. Could we find ourselves in some of these stories? Now, we've seen an outcast, incurable, leprous man. He was healed. He wasn't even sure if it was the will of God. He got healed. Uh, we saw a mother-in-law. She was healed of a fever. We saw a paralyzed man brought by his, his friends. He was forgiven of his sins, and he was healed. A father set out to get Jesus to come and heal his son, and we understand that that son had died uh, before Jesus even got there. And I love it. He just turned around. And he said, hey, don't you doubt. Only believe. And his son was raised from the dead. We saw a man with a withered hand, no expectation of a miracle. He was healed. Centurion got a, a miracle for his servant. A man came and got a miracle for his daughter, a woman who was chronic. You remember 12 years with an issue of blood, she was healed. Two blind men chasing Jesus down and they were healed too. Uh, how about the Syrophoenician woman's daughter tormented with devils? She was healed. A man that was born blind, he was born that way. He was healed. Deaf and mute, he was taken out of town. He was healed. A blind man healed. A man with a lunatic son who believed but you know, he needed a little bit of help with his unbelief. His son was healed too, which showed us what? You can have faith in your heart while still dealing with thoughts of doubt in your mind. And uh, all those were one way and they walked away from an encounter with Jesus, totally changed. And so that's my expectation for you tonight. If we were writing the Bible tonight, could your story be in it? It could, it could be. And listen, even if you don't suffer with the exact same physical condition, the biblical principles are still gonna be the same uh, and, and the healing power is still the same. So I mentioned believing that Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, why is that important for your healing? Ephesians 1, 19 and 20, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and he seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. Exceeding great power was given to the believers according to the same power that it took to raise Jesus from the dead. That's resurrection power in our bodies to resurrect a miracle in your physical body. I mean, imagine if it could raise a dead man up, then any pre-death condition would also be subject to be healed under that resurrection power. So tonight, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pick up the phone tonight. You're gonna to see the number right there on the screen. I want you to leave a message tonight. We're going to listen. We're going to pray over that. I have an amazing prayer team here at the Midwest Healing Center. We take that, we pray, we send that over to the Holy Spirit, if you will, and then we, we call you back out of the knowledge that he gives us as to who should call you back and what it is that we need to say to you. But here's where you come in. When you call, we're going to have you do something as an act of faith tonight. We have you say something specific here. You know, I mean, you remember Jesus told that man, he said, listen, if you can do anything, help me. And Jesus said, if I can, he said, no, 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 only if you can believe. And that man answered, he said, I do believe. I do believe. He spoke it. So can you tonight, do you believe? I believe that you do. Let's put our voice to that belief then. So I want you to call, and I just want you to say this tonight. I want you to say, Donnie, I believe in the exceeding greatness of God's power to heal me of. And you just go ahead and you fill in the blanks with whatever is going on. Come on, guys, listen, this is faith. This is, this is as the Bible says, let the weak say something else, right? Let them say that I'm strong. Why? Because it's just a setup in your faith tonight to be able to release the power of God's word. That's all that you're doing tonight. Donnie, I believe in the exceeding greatness of God's power to heal me of, and you fill it
put in cancer, pain, addiction, it doesn't matter, nothing off limits. You call, you leave a message tonight, and again, we're going to call you back. And just like these that we've seen so far in the Bible, your lives are about to be totally different. You know, the Bible says over in Job, you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. Let's get the miracle established right here tonight. That's the truth of the Word of God. Let's expect it. Let's locate yourself in this story here tonight. Let's do what they did. Let's hear what they heard. Let's believe what they believed. Let's receive what it is that these people received. So tonight's miracle is going to be this. It's our man at the pool of Bethesda. You remember this guy? This is found over in John 5. We're going to look through verses 1 through 9. And this one's going to be a little bit different than some of the stories that we've been looking at so far. And I want to address this right away. We've been asking some questions with these miracles because we're finding some biblical principles in here in these stories. Even though your physical issue may not be exactly the same, the biblical principles work across the board to bring healing to you for no matter what it is. And so we've really been placing an emphasis, of course, on your faith, right? And uh, in these past miracles that we've looked at and we've seen so far, faith really is a key key in being able to receive miracles. 16 out of the 19 miracles that we're looking at talk about faith, but tonight's miracle falls into one of those three that don't talk about faith at all. So where we've seen statements such as, uh, like, such as you believed, be it done unto you, uh, according to your faith, uh, you know, be it done unto you, you know, such as you believed, this story doesn't have any of that one in it tonight. So the question is this then, could the Spirit of God move in such a way you could be healed while not really having any expectation of it in any way? Like maybe you weren't actively using your faith at that very moment to seek something out. Could you still be healed? Could something happen? I'm talking about sitting there minding your own business. You've been suffering in some way physically. And all of a sudden God touches you in such a way that whatever it was that you were suffering from is gone. And you're sitting there totally set free. Can it happen? All the while, again, not really having any great expectation for it. I know you want it and I know you need it. And, you know, I'm not sure. Can it happen? Uh, it can and it does. But I want to talk to you about this tonight because I need you to understand how this works. Uh, because most of us, we want it this way, right? I mean, hey, God, just heal me. You, you know what's going on. No real faith. I don't want to study the miracles and I just want healed. And so God, why won't you heal me? We know that he has the power to do it, don't we? So, but if we look at examples of Jesus, can I say this to you? Healing coming this way that we're going to talk about tonight is the exception and not the rule. Okay. It was this way with Jesus. It was this way in his ministry. Let me say this. Healing can only happen this way when the gifts of the Spirit are in operation that we see over in 1 Corinthians 12. So when the gifts are in operation, this is God seeking man out. Uh, when it's faith, that's man seeking God out based off of what it is that he heard that drove him to action. But notice in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 11, it says that these gifts will manifest as he, the Spirit of God, wills, means that we don't make these happen. If we, if we could make them happen, they'd be happening all the time, you understand. So Paul said, don't be ignorant about the gifts. Many of us are, but let's look at it. Uh, we're going to see it in this miracle. Let's start in John 5, verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people. They're blind, they're lame, they're paralyzed. They're waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down, it says, at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and he knew that he'd already been in that condition for a long time, he said, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. So praise God before we go any further, guys. Uh, what an amazing miracle. This man was paralyzed for over three decades and he walks out of this place totally healed, totally whole. Here's Bethesda. It's got five porches. And from some of the archaeological dig uh, photos that I've seen, uh, it could easily hold a thousand people plus. I'm just guessing. And I'm using that number as just an example. But here it is. It said that it was filled with sick people. Now, we got a lot of places just like that now, don't we? We can look at nursing homes. We can look at hospitals and all over the country filled with sick people. And so it says it was filled with a great multitude. And if I remember right, I think this pool is about 55 feet long. And the Bible gives us an example of some of the people that were there that day. Blind people, they were halt, they were withered. There was other paralyzed people. And they're all waiting for the same thing. They're waiting for the moving of this water. 
Now, many of you, really, you're about the same because here you are, you're waiting for something special that honestly faith could deliver to you at any time. At any time, this can happen. And this is nothing of condemnation to you, not at all. People get to this point for a lot of reasons. We get tired, we get upset, whatever, it doesn't matter. But we're always waiting for something special when it comes to this one. When faith could deliver this to you at any time, when you hear something that convinces you to believe, you could have this. At a certain season, an angel would come down and stir the water, and the first in is healed. Uh, this is a whole lot like people waiting for the anointed man or woman of God to come into town again for that special meeting, right? Well, we're going to wait. We're going to wait till they come. You know, we're going to wait, right? I mean, you think about it waiting, and that's what people do. And so we're hoping that maybe something could take place at some point. And like these people, I don't blame you because, hey, they just wanted healed. They're not bad people, right? They just want to be healed. They're desperate at this point to try anything. And re in reality, their faith was just a little misguided, that's all. Because when you begin to weigh the odds... Only one is going to get healed that day. What about the guy up on porch number five? I mean, what a desperate thing to come and sit there knowing I'd have to walk through a thousand people to be the first one in. But, you know, man, what are the odds? But it says that they were there year after year. They would come. And this man, his story, it's no different. He shared that with Jesus that he'd been waiting a long time. And so far, well, not been able to get in. Is that you, friends? Come on, because here again, another year at the, at the pool. You know, no results at year five, no results at year 10. You know, people can die waiting for a special move of the Holy Ghost or, or the minister to come into town or some special meeting. People die waiting on things like this. I want to share this with you quickly. Simply put, uh, let's really pull it back. There's two ways to be healed. Two ways. One is by a special move of the Holy Ghost, like I said, through the gifts of the Spirit. That's found in 1 Corinthians 12, where God seeks out man, that the gift is manifested as the Spirit wills. The next way is simply by faith, where you heard the Word of God, maybe you read the Word of God, and you believe the Word of God, and it moves you to action based off of your belief in that Word, and then you seek God to receive what it is that He promised to you through that Word. In this story, here we see Jesus seeks this man out. Why? It's through the gifts of the Spirit. Nobody else is healed on this day at the pool. Why? Because it was Spirit-led as the Spirit wills to go to just this one man. Now let me take another route because I need you to get this in the limited time that we have. Uh, let's say it this way. There's two ways to get money legally, let's just say. Uh, one, you can play the lottery, right? You can play the lottery because we can't say that people don't win the lottery. Some people do. Some people win the lottery, but the odds are slim, but not impossible. It's just not the rule, if you will. And so that's kind of like the gifts of the Spirit. Now, faith is like this. The other way is you get a job, you go to work based off of what you know, and then it pays every single time on time, all the time. That's just like faith. So let me say it's not wrong to desire to receive through the gifts of the Spirit, not at all. But if you've been sitting back waiting and waiting and waiting, wait no more. Wait no more, friends. Wait no more because tonight your faith can set you free. Like a woman with an issue of blood, right? It says in Mark 5, she heard of Jesus. Faith comes by hearing. And what she heard caused her to act. Now she's moving based off of what she heard. And she took that healing. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. And she went and she got it. So again, I'm going to encourage you. Go ahead and pick up the phone tonight. Call me right now because you do know him. You do know Jesus, don't you? I mean, you know the word of God. You know that he's a healer. And so I got to believe that if somebody at the pool recognized Jesus that day, because it said he left there pretty quick, uh, nobody else knew that he had been there. But I bet if somebody had seen him and they approached him in faith that day, they would have been healed on that day. They would have. But they would have needed to initiate that. And you can. You can do that right now. Uh, I don't want you waiting anymore. I see this guy here in this story. He waited a long time. I mean, I appreciate the end of the story. I think it's great. I don't want you to have to wait three decades. I don't want you to have to wait three more minutes to get your miracle. I think that's too long. But here's what you can do. You can come and move based off of what it is that you know about God, the character of Jesus. And you can go ahead and pick up the phone. You can leave us a message. Again, you're going to allow us time to pray. We're going to seek the Holy Spirit on this one. Again, he's going to lead us as to who should call you back, what it is that needs to be said. And uh, it, listen, if their faith made them whole, I think your faith could make you whole tonight. I really do. But here's what we've been led to do. You're going to say something specific because I need you to have you. Listen, I can't have faith for you. I need you to have it. Jesus asked the blind men a question and he expected the right answer from those guys. And the answer was, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we believe you're able to do this. So if your pool experience still has you sitting there watching this television program and you're five years down the road and nothing has changed, you need to change the losing game a little bit, friends. And so I want you to call me tonight. And you're just going to say this by faith. Donnie, I believe that Jesus is able to heal me of 
you just go ahead and fill in the blanks. It's just that simple tonight, friends. And what we're going to do is we're going to listen to that. We're going to hear from the Holy Ghost. Listen, you got people here that are investing in your miracle tonight because we love you. So call and just say, Donnie, I believe he is able to heal me of, and we're going to call you back. And, and no, listen, if you get the special move, that's awesome. That's great. If the gifts of the Spirit, if it happens, praise God. But otherwise, give me a call tonight right now. This man gets set free. Now watch this. Now what about the other 999, if you will, who didn't get healed on that day? This is one of the few times that we don't see where it says that Jesus healed them all because it was the gift in operation. So what could they do? Well, they're not out of luck. They can have faith. They can have faith to receive from him because, again, if anybody would have approached him, right? We've seen this in all these miracles so far that everybody that came to Jesus uh, left with a miracle when they come with an expectation. So I really believe that tonight is your night to go ahead and get off that porch of sickness and disease and pain and mental torment. So in John 5, it tells us an angel would come down, stir the waters. First one that gets in gets healed. Here's Jesus. He's talking with this man. He knows this guy's been there a long time. And Jesus asked this man a question. Would you be made whole? Now catch this now. Again, the answer should have been the same as the blind men. Yes, Lord. Yes. He didn't even recognize who Jesus was. He, he addressed him as sir, right? He, well, sir, you know, he didn't even know who he was. Uh, Jesus is offering this man a way out. And here's the thing. I want you to know he's offering a way for you to get out of it tonight as well. But this man didn't even recognize him. Come on, have you been that way before? So focused on some other answer or so focused on the problem that sometimes I think we miss the answer standing right in front of us, guys. It's right here in the word of God. And so many of us have done that, I'm sure. This man begins to tell Jesus all the reasons why he cannot be made whole. He blames the disease. He blames others. I'm paralyzed. I don't have anybody to put me in the water every time that I try to, uh, the, you know, when the water moves, people jump over me and they beat me down there to it. I mean, this guy's a victim. He really is. And here's the thing. He's had decades to sit here and stew on this whole thing. Nobody's coming here to help a brother. I mean, they've seen me here for years and nobody's trying to help me. I mean, I mean come on. I'm the worst one here. I've been here the longest. I'm the sickest. I'm the worst one. And, and nobody cares. Guys, listen to me tonight, please. No matter what, do not ever, never, ever feel sorry for yourself. It's such a waste of time. It's such a waste of time. It gets you nothing, nothing. I've talked to people that can spend an hour telling me everything about everything that's gone on wrong with them, and they can't even give me two scriptures. Uh, people are going to have to really begin to let go of their past, and you need to do that as well. I know it's not fair. I know it's not right. My point is just this, but what are we going to do about it now? You want to lay around for three decades griping and complaining about it? Or would we like to go ahead and just go ahead and be made whole? We just got to do a big reset tonight and say, you know what? I'm just, going to, I'm just going to begin to turn my focus away from everything else and finally get my eyes on Jesus. That's what happened in this story. And so I love it because there are many times that certainly the gifts of the Spirit will be in operation for you to be able to receive your healing or your miracle, minus you having any expectation at all for it. But overall, if you've been waiting and waiting, again, very much like this story, certainly there are times that, that no doubt people did get healed here when an angel came and stirred the water. But again, the odds just weren't really great. Not at all. And yet in these stories that we've seen so far, any person, every person who approached Jesus in faith, I mean, you look at the different levels of faith, if you will. And what I mean is this, some it said had great faith right? That's what it said. Maybe that's not you, but some had a very confident faith in, in just believing that he was able to, but not sure if he wanted to, but I believe that he's able to. Others had a mustard seed faith, just a mustard seed that said, well, I believe you can maybe, but I'm not sure the who, what, why, when, where, and how, but I couldn't say that it was impossible. And, and, I, and so I do believe, but help my unbelief. And all of these, every single one of these that came to him with any level of faith, if you will, Every one of them left with a miracle. Every single one of them. No waiting, no years of hoping. So I want to encourage you tonight to wait no more. I love that Jesus told this man, hey, pick up your bed and walk. That was a gift of the Spirit in operation. At that very moment, I, I love this, but what if you were the guy that was two seats away that Jesus didn't say that to and you needed healed as well and he didn't come to you with the same offer? That's okay because you can believe by faith and be able to receive. But if it's the gift, again, if it's the gift in operation, this is where God is moving through somebody just like he did Jesus right here and understand that with that command also comes the power for you to be able to fulfill that command and the obedience that you can be able to arise and walk. That's on your side. But God will always provide the power for you to be able to fulfill the request. You remember when Jesus was walking on water and Peter said, hey, if that's you, tell me to come. At the moment that Jesus said that word come, along with that word came the power to be able to fulfill it. But Peter, he's the one that had to step out by faith and put action to it and step out of the boat. The man at the pool, he still had to arise. 
He still had to take up his bed. And so I also wanted to mention this, that Jesus found this man the next day and he had some further instructions. He said, hey, do not continue to sin or a worse thing is going to come upon you. I don't think we need to say too much more about that one, do we? So tonight, are you ready to arise and be healed? That's the question. This is your moment. No more waiting. Jesus paid the price. We know what 1 Peter 2 says. We know what Isaiah says. By his stripes, you are healed. The power's all there. And so it's Jesus. He's asking you tonight. It's very simple. Will you be made whole? How are you going to answer that question tonight? Imagine him standing over you, right? I told you to find yourself in this miracle. Imagine Jesus standing over you right now, and he's asking you the question. You've been chronic. It's been years. It's been inoperable. It's been incurable. But tonight, Jesus is standing over you, and he is asking, and you've got to answer the question properly. Will you be made whole? Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to pick up the phone, call the number on the screen, right? We're almost finished here tonight. So I want you to call. And again, we're going to be led by God to do something here, and it's producing amazing results in those that are doing it. So I want you to call. You're going to leave a message. And again, we're going to listen to that. We, we pray. We seek the Holy Ghost for wisdom. Absolutely. We call you back. We minister to you out of the knowledge, out of the things that he tells us. Because, hey, he knows all things. We don't, right? We can assume some things, but we don't need to assume some things. We need to know some things. You leave a message. Here's the further instruction. Jesus asked a direct question. Will you be made whole? I want you to call me tonight. And again, I don't need all the details because this man's details didn't matter. The man tried, you know, he's like, hey, well, I got people that didn't do this and people did that. Guys, I don't want to hear the full story. I'm sorry. We just got to stop focusing on the problem. This man, for the first time, was able to take his eyes off of something that hadn't worked for years anyway. And now he's, but he, what did he do? He still had his eyes on the issue here. And Jesus is just like, look, I don't want to hear all the reasons why you can't. I'm giving you one reason why you can. And the reason is, is because Jesus said so. And that's what I'm telling you tonight. It's because Jesus said so. So I want you to call and I want you to just say, Donnie, tonight I shall be made whole of. That's all that I need you to say tonight. You fill in the blanks. Nothing too hard. Nothing too far gone. Doesn't matter how long you've been there, how incurable, how inoperable, who hurt you, who did, who didn't, who's given up. I'll tell you the one that hasn't given up, and it's Jesus, and he's coming to you tonight through this program, and you call Donnie tonight, I shall be made whole of cancer, I'll be made whole of addictions, I'll be made whole of a broken heart and hurts and pains. Man, we even have AIDS patients being healed, glory to God, heart issues, nothing is off limits tonight. You're going to call, and I'm telling you that once you release your faith by calling that number tonight, making that statement. Donnie, tonight I shall be made whole of. I believe that what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself just like this man. The power is available in the, in, the, in the request. And once you make that statement, I believe that you're going to be able to arise and to stand up. And all the things that have been carrying you, you're finally going to be able to carry those things and walk away healed and whole in Jesus' name. Friends, thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, I've got some exciting news. Guys, we just ordered our 40 by 60 tent, 40 feet by 60, 2,400 square foot tent that we just ordered. Praise God. Why? Well, because we are going to hit the road doing tent revivals all over the U.S. this next year. Now, we've done some in the past. We've actually started this ministry uh, doing tent revivals years ago, but uh, we've ordered a new one and we are excited about what it is that God is doing in this season. That being said, I'm going to ask you to do something, if you would, please prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. You can give a one-time gift, tax deductible, if you would, please. Uh, otherwise, you can partner with this ministry. Again, we, we are really wanting to launch into this, to go into a bunch of different towns, different states, different cities, and bring the amazing gospel, healing gospel of Jesus Christ into these places. Would you help us do it? The information's on the screen to partner with us, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in a town near you.